Hello YouTube, WJ's Handy Dad here, and today we're answering the question, can you put a 10 inch screen stereo into your Crown Victoria Police Interceptor? So the short answer is yes, this will fit, however, it's going to be angled about like that in there, I went and test fitted it, but you can see the stereo that I took out is basically identical as far as dimensions so shouldn't be any issues at all long term I've had this one in now since I filmed the the video putting it in and it's just it hadn't really held up the GPS is really funky on it half the time it doesn't work so I was just looking for something a little bit more reliable this one costs three times what that one cost it's got a lot faster processor and everything that's kind of my other issue with this radio is it's really slow to boot up and like if you turn on your car and your radio is on because I always leave mine on and uh, by the time it boots up let's say I'm talking to somebody in the car so I want to turn this off you can't do that for you know a good 30 seconds to a minute at least before it boots up and then all of a sudden you're, you're in the middle of a conversation and radio kicks on really loud so um, and then you're trying to turn it off so you know the slow boot up and the issues with the GPS make me want to change out to this plus I mean let's face it that's pretty cool to have 10 inch screen so another question I see asked all the time is which adapter do you need because I mean obviously you could cut your factory wiring and solder together I don't recommend that I recommend buying one of these adapters that allows you to solder to whatever came with your stereo and then plug directly into the factory and that way you can always put the factory radio back in at some point this is what they typically ship whenever you're like if you google search for Crown Victoria and it's not correct or at least it's not correct on mine. Mine's an 08. This is the correct one, so the black one. So if you have a newer model, and somebody out there put in the comments if, if you know that this works on an older model, because that may be the case. It may be, you know, older as in like before 2000 and something. This may be the connector, and this may be the one for all the newer ones. But anyway, if you have a newer one, certainly an 08, and they try to sell you this one, this is not correct. So don't don't get it. So the process of conversion, I was really hoping that these were the same. This is the one that came with the new stereo and the old. And you see they are very, very similar. But unfortunately, they are not wired the same so I can't just leave this one and plug it into the new radio I have to basically cut all these re-solder them to here and then I'll be good to go also always remember if you got like a CD player on it it should have locking screws you need to remove those before you get this installed otherwise your CD player won't work and then you have to yank it out of the dash again so pull those screws so you see I'm recycling this older one I just cut it put all my shrink tubing on here and then I'm gonna solder it to the new one which interestingly enough has this plug on it so I'm gonna have to cut this plug off and then solder all these wires together here Here's the final result of the soldering. So I got all the shrink tubing on there to keep the wires protected. 
went ahead and just grounded the safety ground. Basically that's used for sensing if your car is in park. Honestly it's more of a pain in the butt than uh, just grounding it and that way you can access everything on your stereo without having to do anything else. Otherwise you'd have to find a ground source that's got a ground when the car is in park and wire to that because that's not a standard on this connector where you'd have to just wire in a switch. Like I said, I've never found a radio that doesn't work with this just grounded all the time. So to me, it's just easier to ground it and done. And I pulled, this is this power antenna power, so I just pulled the fuse out of it that way. There's not a hot wire bouncing around in there. And I'm just going to put connectors on these so that they can plug in. So I'll try to match the connectors. And then it's just a matter of connecting that back in the car. Putting everything in. See, there's your factory connector. Obviously, it's nothing like that gray one that they included with the mounting kit. But that just connects there, and it makes a really tight seal here. In fact, it's not very easy just to press that and pop that off of there. So once you get this on here, you know you're you're not getting that off of there very easily. I had to actually slip a plastic tool in there to get that removed. Then reconnect all these. Set power. And then I usually put electrical tape on there just to. I mean, they're not going to come apart, but just one extra layer of protection there. And then I've got my backup cam, my subwoofer input. So you see, when you pull that up, you can just drop the cable right through there, and it actually will end up inside of there. So you can see it pops through there. You put it through that hole there but you gotta run your cable underneath this little vent gap and then stick there's a hole in the metal where this little fish tool is here you just push the wire through there and then grab that in and pull it through all right I have the wires fished so fishing is probably the most time consuming part. I didn't really sit here and film it because it would be really boring and you'd hear me saying lots of cuss words. <laughs> but got it all done. So this one's actually pretty neat. It has a microphone. It's got Wi-Fi and GPS antennas. So I had to fish some extra wires. Also, down there you see, I. Fished. It's got three USB connectors. I'm not really sure what the two do. The two are connected to this. So I'm guessing maybe they're just power sources. I'm not really sure. And then the other one is just basically an extension cord. So there's a USB on the back of the unit. I'm guessing you can plug in an iPod or something. I wanted to have that hooked up even if I don't ever use it just so I don't have to get back in here later on if I find out that I need it. Up here you can see so I ran the uh, phone microphone wire behind this plastic tray so it actually sneaks in the hole up there and then the two antennas go 
through here and down the same hole. So they all, all of them come back out in the back of there. And then the phone, I ran up the A pillar underneath the headliner and it comes out. And I've just got it clipped to there for now. That should be probably the best place for it. But I'll leave the slack on the cable up under this headliner so that I can maneuver it if I need to. All right, we're just testing it. It's not permanently mounted yet. So as you can see, it is working. I'm gonna have to, that date and time is not correct. It's a little bit off, so I don't know what time zone it thinks we're in. say it's pretty cool having this big of a screen in the car and uh, it does fit <laughs> it's it's tight but it does fit and uh, you know, I think having all the different options like being able to use it for the phone and stuff would be a neat toy for me although I'm not somebody that talks on the phone while driving so probably won't use it it'll probably be my kids using it all right, so when you put a double DIN in a Crown Vic, pretty much it'll just sit in there without any kind of installation materials at all. They don't move. So it's not like you need to worry about when you're driving around that it's going to slide around or fall out. I mean, this one has been sitting in here, and I've been driving around with it for a while, uh, you know, and it, it doesn't budge. But if you are concerned, or maybe yours has damage around the trim or whatever so it's not going to hold then basically you just bolt these pieces to the side and uh, it's a little bit odd I would think you'd want this to be on the outside of the stereo but the way they have it this is going to be the outside so when it's in your dash you're going to see this part on the edge. That's what I'm talking about. Like I would think you'd want to see the smooth side on either side of your stereo, but you're actually going to see this little gap. So it looks like you would just grab this and pull to remove, but actually it locks in, and these tabs don't have any kind of key or way to you know, open them from the outside. So if you choose this option, once you've done this, your stereo is in until you remove the whole pod area, which, if you saw my video on the instrument cluster, I mean, it's basically removing this whole instrument cluster cover, and then the stereo will come out as part of that. So like I said, once you do this, it's in. So that's up to you if you want to do it. I mean, you see there's a little bit of wiggle, but it's not... That's me pulling on it. That's not just from driving. It doesn't move when I'm driving. So I'll leave that up to you if you think it's necessity to uh, snap it in. But like I said, once you do, it's not coming out. They unfortunately don't make it like the factory radio with the little key that you can release it from the front. So if you opt to go ahead and make it secure, which I'm going to go ahead and do since I've got this apart here, but you just take the screws that come with your radio and just screw them in. Like I said, you want to get this piece to where it this would be flush with the dash, so this is sticking out a little bit. And uh, it'll snap in, lock in, and you're not getting it out without taking apart the dash or destroying something. It also comes with a plastic piece that goes across the bottom doubt I will need it with a stereo like this where it's basically so big that you can't see the bottom but I'll look once I get this in here so it is in and it I think because the stereo is so big I would probably need to cut some more of the dash but I really don't want to do that so I'm just leaving it snapped in part of the way but it's it's secure it's not going anywhere 
and uh, so far I'm enjoying the stereo I'll, I'll be honest one thing that really pissed me off with it is it says that it comes with navigation and it does not come with navigation it comes with a GPS and it comes with the ability to load Google Maps and run off of Wi-Fi so if you have a cell phone that will provide Wi-Fi you can run Google Maps on here or you can purchase a navigation software I suppose but uh, really misleading because to me a stereo if it has navigation it has navigation if it's just can be put on there it's navigation ready so very misleading a lot of money for this stereo uh, I say a lot of money I mean it was 300 and something dollars which to me is a lot of money to spend on a Crown Vic radio and when it says that it plays CDs DVDs and has navigation you expect it to have it so that's really my beef with this is the lack of navigation of false advertising um, the other thing and this may just be user lack of knowledge but it's an Android system I would think this would be highly customizable but I'm really finding that it doesn't have as many features as I would have expected it to have um, honestly the hundred dollar radio that I had before the GPS system on it was crap because it was obviously a hacked version that you couldn't update maps on and the maps that it came with were old but um, as far as you know feature for feature that stereo was about hundred dollars this one's a little over 300 this is not three times the radio uh, yes you are getting a bigger screen which is certainly nice and you're getting the ability to do Wi-Fi and stuff but honestly I you know dollar for dollar I'm disappointed with this not disappointed with it just overall but you know bang for the buck definitely give it a thumbs down it should come with more um, pros it boots up really quickly video was helpful appreciate a thumbs up subscribe if you're not subscribed and please tell your friends about my channel thank you very much